Hi, and welcome to video two for section 3.1 for Math 181. In this video, we're going to look at the number E. Which I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but the number E and the natural exponential function. So, in terms of calculus, the number e we define as following. We say that e is the limit as x goes to 0 of the function 1 plus x all to the 1 over x power. So, as x goes to 0, this function approaches our irrational number e, which is what? It's like 2.719, something in that area. But we define e as that, and then we say that y equals e to the x power is what's known as the natural exponential function. So if someone says I have the natural exponential function, it's what? It's e to the x power. That's what they're talking about. What does this look like? So I'm going to stress here, we're going to be talking about the graph of e. Um, some of the subsequent videos will talk about the graph of the log function. And it's super important because when you start working some of these problems and you're trying to figure out domain and range, if you can think back to what the graphs look like, it'll help the process a little bit. So we have the following. The limit of e to the x as x goes to infinity, uh, sorry, as x goes to negative infinity. So the limit of e to the x as x goes to the infinity, this is what? It becomes almost 0. And the limit as x goes to positive infinity of e to the x. Because remember, e is just our notation for the number 2.719 something. So almost 3 to the infinity power is what? Is infinity. If x is 0, so if I'm going to graph this now, if x is 0, e to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is what? It's 1. As I go to negative infinity, this thing becomes almost zero. It never becomes negative. But then as I go towards positive infinity, this thing blows up on me, becomes infinity itself. So that's my limit as e goes to negative infinity. The limit as e goes to positive infinity, that's what the graph looks like. And so let's try a couple examples. So the first one, if I want to find the limit as x goes to 0 from the left side, so remember if we have some number and a plus or minus, we're talking either from the left side or from the right side, if it's plus, of e to the 1 over x power. So I'm going to do some substitution here. So my solution, let's let some variable t equal this 1 over x. So as x goes to 0 from the left side, it's what? It's negative 10, negative 5, negative 1, negative half, negative 0.1, negative 0 0.001. It's getting closer and closer to 0, but it's what? This is always going to be a negative number. So as t, if we say this here, then t, the limit, as t goes to negative infinity, I'm uh, sorry, as, zero, as x goes to 0, from the left, what happens? t goes to what? Goes to negative infinity. 
So the number in the denominator is going to be really, really small, which means it's 1 over a tiny number, which goes to infinity. But because we're coming from the left side, this mean, that means t goes to negative infinity. So I can rewrite my original problem. And I'm basically saying, as t goes to negative infinity, what is e to the t? So if we use, uh, is that an, yeah, so similar idea to video one, as a number bigger than one is going to a negative infinity, the negative exponent, this thing goes to what? This thing goes to zero. So again, it'd be e to a negative exponent, take the reciprocal, so the number in the bottom is becoming very, very, very big. So 1 over a very, very big number becomes 0. So we'll get one more example. So in that one, we use some substitution in order to simplify what our original uh, limit was. In this one, we're going to kind of flash back a little bit to chapter 1, I believe it was. Yeah, when we were doing limits. So we want to find the limit. As x goes to infinity of e to the 2x over e to the 2x plus 1. So when I had something like this in chapter 1, let's say I had some polynomial in the numerator, some polynomial in the denominator, how did I figure out what this limit went to? And it was when we were doing like vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So I did what? I divided everything by the largest degree of the denominator, right? So what I'm going to do is divide everything by my e to the 2x. And your indication here is that you have the same number or the same value in the numerator and denominator. So if you're taking an exam, if you're doing homework, you come across something like this, that should be sort of your indication like, oh yeah, just divide everything through by that. So you get what? The top divided by e to the 2x is 1. And we still have the limit as x goes to infinity. So the top becomes 1. e to the 2x divided by e to the 2x, that becomes 1. And then plus 1 over e to the 2x. So now as I do this limit, I'm just going to do what? Take the limit of each piece. Well, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 is just 1. Limit as x goes to infinity of 1 is still just 1. And then here, as x goes to infinity, the number in the denominator gets large, goes to infinity. 1 over a really large number is what? This goes to 0. So this becomes 1 over 1, which is just 1. So the limit as x goes to infinity of that function is equal to 1. So that wraps up uh, section 3.1. Come on back. We're going to do section 3.4. I know it's a little bit out of order, uh, but 3.4, we're going to deal some more with uh, exponential functions, specifically for um, growth and decay. So we're going to kind of go a little bit out of order uh, since we've been talking about exponentials and sort of stick on that. So come on back, and we'll deal with 3.4.